One of the things you have to get used to when you're converting a school bus into a tiny house is crawling under it to do random things. So we're working at getting the track out of the bus and the easiest way we've found is to put one person under the bus, the other inside of the bus. So I crawl under with an impact driver, Caleb is inside with an Allen key in the head of the bolts, and then we work together and go down the line of the bus to try to get all of the track out. Welcome to Seeking Discovery. I'm Ryan and I have a passion for travel and building things. At the end of 2020, I decided it'd be a great idea to purchase my very own school bus to convert into a tiny house. So come along as I make mistakes, learn a lot, and make lasting memories turning this old bus into a new tiny home. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along on all the adventures. I look forward to sharing this with all of you. And as always, continue to explore every day. So as you can see, Caleb's hiding up in there somewhere, maybe. Hello, I've got my Allen key. And now that he's got his Allen key ready, I will be climbing under the bus where I've spent the last couple minutes. So now that we're under here, take the impact driver with a really big ex extension on it and I go and find the next one. Caleb, you ready? And then we work together. And it's as simple as that to get them out. Unfortunately, not every nut is accessible from the bottom, so we will have to grind some out and cut them out. Um, so even though this bus is a high top, which was great, this part is taking a lot longer than we expected. Well guys, as you can see, we are losing daylight here in Florida. Um, luckily, at least the days are getting longer now, but we've made some good progress inside. It's probably gonna be a little bit dark in here, so I apologize, um, but I'll kind of explain what we were doing if we can see it. So, if you can see here, we've got these leftover heads of the bolts there, and Caleb and I have been taking hole saws and actually going through and drilling out where every single stuck bolt is that we couldn't get taking them out from under the bus. So we officially have the first long piece of track out and that puts us a whopping 16th of the way done. We've already burned out one hammer drill so I need to get new brushes for that. This drill likes to overheat so we gotta we gotta pace ourselves so that we don't burn out power tools drilling these aluminum channels out it's day i don't know anymore of trying to get the floor out of the bus but i think i just had a breakthrough and a way to make it go even faster so as we mentioned before i've been crawling under the bus with the impact to take the bolts off from the bottom while caleb's been holding the top well, Caleb has to get some work done, so I'm in here solo working on the bus right now. And for everything that we can't get out, we tried to use a regular drill. And one of my drills actually started smoking, trying to cut holes with a hole saw. Looking down the bus, on each side you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there were eight tracks in the floor that ran the full length of this bus, which the seats were bolted into and ultimately the wheelchairs could be mounted to for this bus. So we've got a pile of it kind of out here. You can see that back here in this portion of the bus we have these four pieces out and that's exciting knowing that there's only like five and a half pieces left on that side of the bus. Unfortunately we have most of this side to still get out. So what have we been doing that's been working? The quickest thing is for one person to go on the bottom of the bus with an impact driver and the other person to be on the top and holding the head of the bolts with an Allen uh, wrench. And then the person on the bottom with the impact will hit the nut on the bottom and try to get it to come off. In cases where either A, we can't reach them or B, they're so corroded that they don't wanna come off, what we do is we leave them and come back with a hole saw 
So over here I've got a heavy duty drill from Harbor Freight with a three quarter inch hole saw. And any bolt that's left, I will come back with that and drill it out so that we can get the track fully out. So you can see these holes are bigger than the rest because they had to be cut out. And once all the rest of the track's out and we're left with just some of those bolts, what we'll end up doing is coming in with an angle grinder and we'll have to grind those off as we're ripping out the rest of the flooring to get down to the metal floor so that it can be checked for rust, patch the holes, and keep moving forward with the build. We got a couple of them that I just knocked out and I found the best way to do it is to do it in cycles. So hit one for a little bit, let it go until there's no more big uh, shavings, move to the next one. When there's no more big shavings, move to the next one. And by rotating through them, the aluminum's not getting so hot that it melts to the blade. So this worked really good. I think I got four of them done in what used to take me the time of one. So I'm excited for this. It seems like it'll work and I'm gonna keep working on these floors to get these tracks out. Also, we sold all of the bus seats today, which was super exciting. Wasn't a lot of money, but anything's great to get out of the build budget um, by selling off things that I don't need anymore. Well, we're down to the last four pieces and all of these will have to be completely drilled out because the diesel tank is under here and the storage compartment is under there. Um, but it's been going pretty quick, so hopefully in the next 20 to 30 minutes, the rest of these will be out. Um, back there at the back of the bus, you can see everything that's been ripped out just today, um, which is maybe about half of all of it, because I took some outside the other day. But it'll be nice to have all the track out, and then the next step will be to rip the rubber off and start grinding the bolt heads with an angle grinder so that they pop all the way out so that we can get the plywood sheets out. Well, that wraps up another day here at the bus build. As you can see, we're still working on the floors and I'm sure this video probably feels like it's going on forever because it feels like that in real life too. So we're gonna wrap up this video and if you like this kind of content, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to see as we continue converting the school bus into a tiny home and if you guys have any tips, tricks, or questions, leave a comment below so that we know what to do as we continue moving forward. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next build video.